not there. Just give you guys a few seconds to get organised, okay? Being the thoughtful, caring person I am. Emphasis on thoughtful. Okay, so um, good afternoon from the cloud. Um, uh, as you get ready for trends this week, um, can I just begin by acknowledging the gentleman I have with me on the stage? Obviously, Kevin Bowler from Tourism New Zealand, Martin Sneddon uh, from Tourism Industry Association, along with Norm Thompson. So I'm looking forward to spending time, obviously, at Trends on Wednesday uh, when I come back for my visit. But um, we thought today we'd give you some details on the pre-budget announcement that uh, I made earlier in the week. As you would have heard, uh, the government is investing an additional $158 million in tourism over the course of the next four years. Uh, so this afternoon we want to give you a bit of a sense of where that money is going. So starting with emerging markets growth, we anticipate spending an extra $44.5 million over the next four years to attract high value visitors from high growth markets. High priorities in this area will include India, Indonesia and Latin America. Um, this marketing will be invested to position New Zealand as a high value destination early on in these markets as they develop. This investment will grow demand, build air linkages and be explicitly targeted to the higher end of these markets. In terms of existing markets, we'll be spending an additional $24.5 million over four years and that will be primarily in six key markets including Australia, China, the United Kingdom, the United States, Germany and Japan which provide 72.4% of total visitors to New Zealand last year. Increased marketing in Japan is to take advantage of that high spending market's emerging recovery and further growth from the promising youth market. China is to extend partnership activity with tra uh, travel, trade and corporates including the premier Kiwi partnership program and similarly scale activity in the United States, United Kingdom and Australia. Uh, business growth is an area that we're looking to build more tourists, so over the next four years we'll spend an extra $34 million in that area. Uh, business event travellers generate a higher spend per day than other travellers, roughly they spend $318 a day as opposed to $208 for a normal traveller. So New Zealand's capacity to hold conventions and conferences is about to grow substantially with the new inter internationally, uh, International Convention Centre proposed here for Auckland and the new conference centres in both Christchurch and Queenstown. So Tourism New Zealand will use this funding to promote New Zealand as a compelling destination for international meetings and exhibitions in, market that, in markets that offer the highest yield. They include of course Australia, the United States, uh, China and Southeast Asia, particularly India, Indonesia and Singapore. Um, one of the last categories we're really looking at is very high value visitors. Um, we'll be spending $20 million there over the next four years. Uh, what we have seen over the last decade is that tourist numbers continue to increase, but spend per visitor is falling. Um, these are visitors who spend far in excess of the usual traveller, so we want to attract more of them. They stay in luxury accommodation, they use private transport and bespoke activity providers, and use high-end tours. These visitors require tailored market approach, they are time poor, relatively price insensitive and value exclusivity. They also provide benefits to New Zealand business through investment. Uh, and uh, finally we'll be partnering with New Zealand's tourism operators, uh, spending $28 million on that area over the course of the next four years. The private sector needs to be ready to respond to increased demand by high value visitors. To assist this we will offer a new program of co-funding called the Tourism Growth Partnership. The government will con contribute up to 50% to initiatives from the private sector that address uh, issues that are barriers to growth in the tourism sector. Some of the issues to the tourism sector includes seasonality, increased um, technology uptake and the recovery of Christchurch. The new funding will absorb and significantly expand the Tourism Strategy Implementation Fund which currently has $1.22 million a year. Uh, 
Finally, um, as my ministerial colleague announced today, will there be improved visitor facilitation over the next four years by spending $7 million to improve uh, what we're doing around uh, visa applications? So many of our fastest growing tourism markets require travellers to have a visa to travel to New Zealand. That means that efficient visa facilitation is an important part of New Zealand staying competitive in those markets. Immigration New Zealand has already announced they are working to accept translated visa applications in Mandarin. Um, this funding will help support that work. With Immigration, we'll be doing further work to improve uh, visitor facilitations while adequately managing, obviously, the risks that are involved. This builds on the announcements I made when I was in China uh, a couple of weeks ago, which is 24-month multi-entry visas to reduce red tape uh, for tourists and encourage them to return, three-year multi-entry visa for Chinese business travellers. Uh, this agreement is reciprocal, so it will also reduce red tape for New Zealand uh, travellers who frequently visit China and Immigration New Zealand has also partnered with China Southern Airlines and in New Zealand uh, to create a streamlined visa process for uh, frequent flyers of those airlines. Uh, so in a moment I'll, I'll get um, Kevin Bowler to say a few words uh, given he'll be uh, charged with spending most of the money. Uh, but the brief snapshot sum summary really is that we're spending $158 million more. That money's going to be spent in a combination of different places but certainly to attract high value uh, tourists to New Zealand, uh, new uh, destinations, particularly emerging markets uh, in Latin America, um, Indonesia and India. Uh, certainly existing markets where we think we're undercooked in those markets and for specialist areas like business travellers and the likes. Um, we'll be spending more money on um, making sure that uh, the immigration service works well uh, for our travellers that come. Uh, for New Zealand, tourism is very important to our overall economy. Roughly one in ten people have a job as a result of tourism. Uh, it's a large part of our economy and a significant export earner. We've got the potential to attract a lot more tourists to New Zealand, but if we're going to be successful in doing that, we fundamentally need to spend more money to have um, either a wide a reach or a deeper reach into existing markets. We are in a highly competitive environment. Uh, there are many countries around the world seeking to attract these tourists to their country and if New Zealand is going to be successful in increasing its overall numbers and the quality of spend uh, then we need to spend a bit more cash. So it comes as part of an overall program the government has uh, to lift growth and to lift export earnings from 30% of GDP to 40% of GDP uh, in the fullness of time. So that's the, the plotted summary. Um, Kevin, I don't know if you want to make a few comments and then um, we'll just toss it open to any questions you might have about this. If you want to throw tourism questions at me first, we can handle those. If you have any other issues, we can just deal with those at the end. So that's fine. Thanks, Prime Minister. Um, on behalf of the industry and Tourism New Zealand, we, we really appreciate this vote of confidence. I think uh, it is a large sector. It's a sector that's very important to the New Zealand economy, and I know that this money is going to make an enormous difference in attracting high-value visitors, as the Prime Minister's um, talked about. Um, what, what's exciting is the timing is also as about as good as it could get. We've had a fantastic summer. Um, it looks like March arrivals numbers are going to be very strong when they come out tomorrow. So we feel very positive. We're on a bit of a roll. We've had the first premiere of The Hobbit last year, and we know that the effects of Middle Earth are really just starting to be felt around the world in terms of demand for New Zealand, and this gives us the opportunity to capitalise on those, on that new demand, and really um, grow the potential of what the sector can really deliver. I think whilst this conference is not about business events, I also think this is a great sign of confidence in New Zealand as a place to host large-scale um, international events as well, with conference con new conference facil facilities expected in Auckland, Christchurch and Queenstown over the next few years. So we really welcome this news uh, and look forward to working up our plans in more detail in terms of how um, we'll use the money most effectively. I want to take some questions. Sure. Stay there and we'll grab you. Questions if you have any. Um, yeah. I think firstly what you typically see in New Zealand is some, some real highs and some quite lows, so we're very um, seasonally affected, so our summer months are um, often you know, pushing the capacity we have, but the rest of the year um, not so much. So one of the aims is to try and attract people um, on off-peak times. Uh, but I mean I think secondly um, there is 
you know the potential need for us to build more capacity over time. You can see in Christchurch the the Free, feverishly working on trying to rebuild the uh, hotel capability. Um, Auckland's got a number of hotels that are being planned, so I think there will be more capacity that will need to be built if we are as successful as we hope we can be. Um, but I think there's uh, lots of capacity to do that. Yeah. Yep. Do you want to comment on, yeah? Martin might want to say something from Tourism Industry Association. Yeah, I think that's, uh, it pretty much falls into the responsibility of the private sector. Um, we're just in the uh, early stages now of creating a, uh, what we're calling a national tourism plan. And one of the two key pillars of that plan is going to be the quality of the visitor experience, which takes in what you were saying, Guy, about service, but actually picks up uh, the experience right from the moment that the potential visitor uh, begins to think about coming to New Zealand through to the time he or she gets back to their own um, home. So we know uh, it's really important that, uh, that we absolutely nail it for those visitors because as we know in Tourism New Zealand presented it again this afternoon, word of mouth is the best marketing we have. So if we can send home visitors thoroughly satisfied with their visit to New Zealand, then that's got a huge spin-off for us. Mm. Uh, a variety of reasons. I mean, firstly, we see huge potential there. So in most of those markets, we're getting somewhere between 10 and 30,000 visitors annually at the moment, and we see the capacity to, you know, add 50% to 100% on those numbers. Uh, secondly, they tend to be within sort of one flight, um, uh, so one sector. So we can we can build on that. Uh, and there are areas where um, we see, uh, for a lot of reasons, a lot of latent potential. I mean, those people are travelling a lot. So if we take somewhere like Indonesia, I mean, I think we can see that that's a market. Historically we've actually done quite well in the past and the numbers have come off dramatically. They've got the potential to really boom. Latin America, I was over there you know, obviously about three or four weeks ago and it's quite clear from meeting the um, in industry over there there's lots of demand. I mean at the moment it's not well serviced by um, uh, connectivity really, you've only got land Chile flying over, so we've lost some capacity out of that sector. But if we can encourage you know, more connectivity, that will help us enormously. I mean, just take somewhere like Brazil, I mean, there's 200 million people, there's quite a big high net worth um, sector there uh, who are very interested in coming to New Zealand. So that's been the primary reason. You might have some other. I'd, I'd just add to that that there's also the um there's also two major events coming up in 2015. We're co hosting the Cricket World Cup. Uh, with Australia, which will be obviously a very big event in India, and we're co-hosting the FIFA Under 20s um, Championship with. Uh, sorry, we are hosting that one, uh, which of course will be really big in South America. Yeah. Um. Oh, I think most of it. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's going to happen, what will emerge over the next few months as we work through this, is the synergy between uh, what it is that, that the private sector is leading here, which fully involves the public sector, and what it is that the Prime Minister's charged Tourism New Zealand um, doing here. There are, these are not two silos, they are fully connected. Mm. Um, Kevin's responsible for attracting and getting people to New Zealand. The private sector is responsible for making sure that, that uh, what they ha uh, what they, the experience they receive when they get here is the best possible. My responsibility and other leaders uh, in the private sector is to make sure that there is no gap between those two things, that they are fully joined up. I expect that as the, the detail of the National Tourism Plan emerges, that there will be a merging also of, of 
the strategy and the actions that are taken to that. So um, I think if we sit here in one year's time, uh, we're going to be saying, you know, that's looking pretty good. Yeah, so I mean obviously we need to have um, those sort of facilities if we're going to really push up the marketing of conventions. So you've got a number of problems. Um, Queenstown hasn't uh, completely signed off their new facilities yet, but they're getting much closer as I understand it. Uh, Christchurch's obviously had the issues with uh, the earthquake and uh, Auckland's been working its way through the Sky City Convention Centre proposal. Uh, my understanding is we're getting closer with Sky City, uh, so hopefully we'll be in a position uh, at some point uh, in a future date not too far away uh, to take another step with that. And I think similarly in Christchurch there's a lot of work going on. So in the short term we could obviously market events that the current facilities can accommodate, but the long term plan is to have an integrated New Zealand wide network basically spanning Auckland, Christchurch and Queenstown. Yeah. So in terms of the first one, um, I mean, what, what um, President Xi Jinping said at the Hainan Island uh, conference at Boao was that uh, this year there are 82 million trips being undertaken by Chinese visitors, and in five years he anticipated that number being 400 million. So if you run the numbers, we get about 200,000 at the moment, it's been growing at about 35% plus a year. Uh, then what uh, is likely to happen, if you just extrapolate those numbers, is we could go from having 200,000 visitors annually at the moment to potentially a million. Now, um, there's a few ifs and buts there along the way, but I think it's eminently possible we'll see a lot more travellers coming from China. Uh, we would welcome that. I think the real key for us is to make sure that we market to the segments that we actually want. There's quite a high value in there in China. So um, at the moment about half our visitors also come via Australia. So having them coming on dedicated trips to New Zealand is quite important because they stay a bit longer. Uh, and there's, a, there's also a business audience there that we could appeal to. So um, essentially we're going to spend that money reiterating where both countries want to go, which is to build the tourism capability both for New Zealand travellers going to China, obviously, but Chinese coming to New Zealand. Just in terms of the earthquake, I mean, obviously we are uh, very saddened to hear the news. Um, it sounds like a devastating earthquake, 6.6, I think, on the reports I've seen. Um, my understanding is, uh, on the most recent information I had, there are about 160 people who have lost their lives. Uh, I haven't had any advice that any New Zealanders have been caught up uh, in the tragic events, and obviously we just encourage New Zealanders, if they are travelling to Sichuan province, to um, make sure that they check the, the travel website on the MFAT site. Okay, do you guys want to rip in any other domestic questions you want to ask me or are you? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so firstly, there'll be a lot of polls between now and then, uh, so we'll uh, take it all with a you know a bit of a grain of salt. There's a wide range of them, and actually, in none of the elections have we been able to govern alone, even though we've had very strong results. In terms of New Zealand First, you know, National's position is that in every election. Uh, we try and give voters a pretty clear indication of who we think we can work with and who we can't. So my expectation is next year we'll give voters a bit of an indication, you know, both in terms of New Zealand First but other parties, whether we will or won't be in a position to be able to potentially at least have discussions with them after the election. Yeah. Yeah. Proposal, yeah. So um, that is a matter ultimately for Mighty River Power and the, and the um, due diligence team. 
Um, I, my, I know that they have been looking at that issue over the weekend. Um, I'm not in a position to give you any indication yet about whether they think there needs to be any supplementary disclosure, uh, but I, we may be in a position at least to give you advice on that in the early part of next week. So they've been looking at it, but there's been no firm conclusion reached yet. Yeah. Well, if I if I understood his his his, um, his point, I, th I think it was slightly different from that. I I, I might be wrong, but I, I think it was a slightly different model to that. But look, I mean, in terms of bottom lines and who we might work with, um, we've taken a fairly consistent view. We've always said, in terms of who we work with, we try and give the voters a bit of a clear steer on that in election year, at least who we'll have discussions with, because it's always subject to what. You know what we can reach and what we can agree. In terms of bottom lines, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to rule things in and out in election year, um, simply because it becomes a bit of a fiasco if you end up doing that. And I think it's far better to say that you know if we're in a position to, to potentially form a government post the 2014 election, we'll sit down with those political parties, we'll see whether we can reach a meeting of the minds, and we'll go from there. Um, but I mean, it's very clear, uh, at, you know, from the government's actions that we believe that the mixed ownership model uh, is the right approach. Um, we think that that is going to both deepen the capital markets uh, and and be the the right actions for those companies themselves. Uh, so we think there's a strong merit behind the program. But in the end, um, we'll see how that how that goes. Hopefully that's wrong. The very successful. And the first thing I'd say is we're delighted they won the international award they did last week. And I think it was a sign of how successful the trails have been. As you're probably aware, there's been a um, sort of establishment board or a foundation board that's now been established, chaired by Richard Leggett. 